Good morning. Uh, I'm out for another walk from my house uh, in Alsford in Essex. I've got Willow with me and no doubt you'll, uh, you'll see her at some point during the walk today. Um, but I've actually come in a different direction today rather than heading towards the, uh, the river and the, the coastline. I've actually gone in the opposite direction from my house and actually come to an area uh, of very different habitat. I'm very lucky that as well as the coastline I've actually got uh, an ancient woodland within just a, a few minutes walk of my house. Uh, but at the moment I'm just on the outskirts of it in the, uh, the wild meadow which you can probably see just in the background. But I've also got uh, another one of the, uh, the lakes which is a, a hangover from the, the quarry and bar ballast works uh, that are still in operation around Alsford. So although this was an incredibly industrial area, it's now a beautiful habitat. So what we're going to do is just have a, a look at a different area around my village and see what else we can find. All right, I'll check in with you soon. As promised, I've got Willow with me. There she is, just waiting for a ball to be thrown, bless her. So let's, uh, let's just get her sorted quickly. There you go, off you go. But one of the first plants that you can't fail to miss when you're walking through this meadow is the gorse and it just looks absolutely amazing. Now there is that saying that kissing is in fashion when the, the gorse is in bloom. It's a bit of a, a misnomer because uh, the various species of gorse pretty much flower every month of the year. Uh, there isn't much time that you won't find some blossom on a bush. So I always think it's a, a good excuse to have a good old snog with your missus if you're out for a walk with her. Uh, but unfortunately I'm on my own today, so you'll have to do without that, uh, that visual. <laughs> but uh, some uses and some IDs. Obviously the amazing yellow blossom at this time of year. Uh, and to say quite often pretty much throughout the entire year but if you if you pick some of that blossom now you'll have to forgive me for describing this but if you give that a bit of a crush and a smell I know the sense of smell is quite a, a personal thing and it will smell differently uh, to, to some people but quite often the smell that you'll get is quite a, a strong coconut smell so that's a, a really nice indicator to help you but also if I get in nice and close just have a look at those vicious needles and spines so not a very common use but something that I've found very helpful uh, in our garden and on our allotment where we grow uh, a lot of our food for home is that you can actually take some cuttings uh, of that gorse and use those needles to put around your early seedlings uh, if you're having problems with mice uh, because it's so spiky that you can make a bit of a barrier and stop the mice getting into the, uh, the plants. Okay, so there's a, a, a bit of an unusual use for you. You can also use those flowers for a bit of a flavouring if you want to make uh, some drink. Uh, so the gorse flower can be picked and just make a bit of a cordial. Uh, traditionally, gorse was actually used as a, a firewood, um, but there are some old laws around it. So for example, in Oxfordshire, it used to be that you couldn't collect gorse for fuel over and above what you could carry on your back. So uh, yeah, uh, quite a, a, an interesting old folklore around it. But now an amazing plant and very, very easy to spot. It gives you a bit of a lift at this time of year. So let's move on, see what else we can find. Just moving on from the meadow, I'm gonna head head more off towards the, um, the the woodland area but what I wanted to show you I don't want to go into detail on uh, the silver birch at all because I'm sure we'll cover that in a, a lot more information in another broadcast or, or blog but what I wanted to do is show you a real good example of how silver birch is a pioneer species 
and starts to expand and push the boundaries of the woodland. So as you can see, we've got a lovely meadow sort of in front of us. But if I just scan round, you can see some of the older woodland in the distance there. But as I come round, just have a look at all of the silver birch. And you can start to understand how much of a pioneer species it is. This area here was actually cut and cleared because they're trying to reinstate more of a, a heathland and meadow area. This was actually all cleared last year. And as you can see, already the seedlings and the saplings are starting to come back up and through. But just look how far the silver birch extend. And we've got some more mature ones just round to my left here. Okay. So it does an amazing job of just pushing the boundaries of that woodland and then the other trees can follow as the habitat changes. All right, let's crack on. Just passing some more gorse and just coming alongside another lake. Uh, but as you can see, the woodland is just in the distance there. Uh, but I've come across another plant I just want to quickly introduce. But before I do, let me just throw Willow's ball again. <laughs> She's waiting patiently, bless her. But the plant I wanted to introduce you to briefly is also the bane of many a dog walker's uh, life. And here we go. You can see that. Those amazingly spiky burrs. So they're the, uh, the seeds or the seed heads from the burdock. So the burdock is a, a biannual, yeah, so it, uh, it grows one year and then flowers the next before it produces these amazing seed heads. So as you can see, there's the old growth coming from that central stem. And if I come along, we've got another much smaller example here. But what this one's going to show you is the seed heads there but next to it is the first year's growth of another plant. Yeah, so if I look down, we've got that single sort of basal rosette all coming from that central point, all fanning out, and those leaves are gonna get really quite big. So they're quite soft and velvety to touch. Yeah, and if you can have a look, quite a lumpy, bumpy surface and some very fine hairs as well and that sort of reddy colour with a very pale underside very obvious veins running through okay so uses for the burdock uh, is if you dig up the roots at the end of the first year that's probably its best time to be uh, to be done but remember you know you've got to stay within the letter of the law so digging up roots is not uh, legal unless you have uh, the permission to do so, okay? Uh, but burdock is a, a nice sort of carbohydrate. Quite, it can be quite fibrous, but it is a good substitute uh, for a carbohydrate. Quite nice roasted. Uh, think of it like a, a potato, yeah? Treat it and cook it as you would a potato uh, in its various forms and you won't go far wrong. But traditionally, uh, it was used as a, a bit of a cleanser. So dandelion and burdock was a good common combination because the, the burdock would be the cleanser, uh, getting rid of all of the toxins and what have you from your body. And the dandelion would act as the diuretic to speed up the fluid going through your body. So dandelion and burdock beer, it's gotta be a health thing, surely. All right, let's crack on. Let's see what else we can find. Oh, we're just moving on through the open ground now, but uh, we're a lot closer to the beginning of the woodland itself, just in the background there. So I don't know if you can see, but I'm now surrounded by sand. So I said that this area was uh, an old sort of ballast and gravel yard. You can see a few mounds of sand up there in the distance. Oh, and Willow again. You're waiting for your ball, are you, girl? All right, let's get you sorted with that. Off you go. <laughs> That's it, keeps her happy. 
but I don't know if you can see all of these tufts of what looks like grass all through the sand here but what it actually is is a, a reed or oh, sorry a, a rush I correct myself there getting so carried away now oh, you're having fun Willow <laughs> There you go. So we've yeah we've got some um, rush here. So this is soft rush, and we've got a, a real um, difference between the lovely green new growth and the quite brown dead growth. But one of the the really good ways of singling down what we've got, uh, whether it's a reed, a rush. Um, sedges, grasses, is, is there's a, a little bit of a saying that you can go through. So sedges have edges, so if you roll it between your fingers, a sedge would have distinct corners, yeah? But this is a rush, and if you can see, that's rolling very, very easily between my fingers. So rushes are round, okay? Or rushes around yeah to help you remember so a few things to have a look at on here if you can see in the center there if I can try and get to focus there's a, a quite a nice white center and you can use your nails to split that open uh, I'm not going to be able to do it unfortunately because I'm holding the the camera but you can split that open oh, there we go if I can just manage it a little bit uh, to expose that white pith in the center. Now, you can use that pith, uh, you can actually make candles from it and set light to those, uh, but you can also collect that, um, and it is edible, although it is a little bit like eating a styrofoam cup. So one of the better uses for it would actually be to put it in a, a stew or a soup if you wanted to, to help thicken it up. Other things just to take note of is later on in the year it does flower and you can see the old flowers still on here from last year. Um, so from a natural navigation point of view they can be quite helpful because they will generally flower in a southerly facing direction. Not always, so as you can see I've got one here facing that way but I've also got one here facing in completely the opposite direction. So it is a general, so don't just look at one and assume that that's the way it's pointing. Also an indicator of water, but also a nice indicator of the wildlife that might be around. So if you can see this one here that's been broken, an old stem that's been broken, can you see how it's almost been torn? There's quite a a long ragged edge pointing up there. So that's very indicative of uh, deer that have been eating it. And I know in these woodlands we actually have quite a few uh, muntjac deer. So certainly going to help you narrow down the food that you can collect immediately from the plant itself, but also what might be browsing around as well. Uh, and Willow's waiting for a ball again. All right, let's give that a throw and then we'll move on. Here you go. Well done, good girl. Come on then. So we're at the old entrance to the gravel works now. This was the, the yard that was used where all of the vehicles would come and go. And just there you have the old uh, way bridge that the lorries used to go on before hitting the public road. But one of the nice things we do have in here is a, a board that's open for everybody to use to record what they've seen. So let's just have a, a bit of a look to see what's coming through. Uh, so there we go, we've had people spotting the bumblebees. I suspect it might not have been a bumblebee because in the sand that we've just gone past, we do also get uh, solitary bees uh, nesting underneath the ground in that soft sand. So look, we've got bluebells, we've got primroses, um, we've got the geese coming in, we've got woodpeckers, we've got uh, yeah, the woodpeckers drumming, got red wings calling, what else have we got? Uh, we've got someone seeing a heron in flight, excellent, that's nice. Uh, we've got yellow hammers, we've got tree creepers, black tops, chiff chaff, buzzards, jay, 
Yeah, so we've got a, an awful lot of stuff that people have seen uh, just in the, uh, the last few weeks. So it's a lovely habitat to come to, because I say you really are seeing an awful lot of different things. And guess what? Willow's waiting for a ball again. You're a very patient girl. Go on, off you go. Right, I promised you woodland, so let's get in, in amongst the trees, get out of this hot sun. <laughs> 